In our next story, Neighborhood Journal's own Joanna Denicio tells us why some people seek such an incredible thrill. People hooking themselves up to giant kites, leaping over a mountain and soaring over grassy plains. What possesses them to do so? Well, I'm going to tell you. You have to do it. I mean, I grew up with hang gliding, so I kind of have a skewed attitude about it. But I started when I was four and I started flying by myself when I was 13. And I can't imagine life without it. And I can't imagine people who don't do it. I mean. I talk to people all the time and they say, yeah, I always wanted to do that. And they never actually come out and try it. And I just can't imagine. I can't imagine if you came out and try it, not coming back and doing it more. And that's what we all are. I mean, we came out and we tried it once and got hooked. Here we are, less than ideal conditions. And we're hopeful to get even a five minute flight because it's better than a day at work. Being an air sport, both recreational and competitive, Hang gliding started out simply as gliding down small hills and has evolved to flying over large distances. Paul Voigt of Fly High Hang Gliding in Ellenville, New York, explains that you need a certain wind condition in order to start flying. That's the most complex thing you need to learn if you're going to be a good pilot or you know a safe pilot is what we call micrometeorology, which is the small weather in your vicinity where you're going to be flying that day. You need to read the clouds, you need to read the trees and the leaves and the, how switchy the wind is. Um, the worst days are the days with the great big atom bomb looking rain clouds that could develop into rainstorms and gust fronts and things. You obviously don't choose to fly on those days. Uh, really windy, gusty days are things we leave alone because it's just no fun to be out there getting thrashed around and it makes the takeoffs and the landings more interesting than they need to be. But, you know, a perfect day if you could buy one is just wind straight into the hill, 5 to 15 miles per hour. The smoother the better. Glider pilots can stay airborne for hours, being possible because they seek out rising air masses. Well, first thing you look at is the wind and the wind direction and the wind velocity. Um, the second thing that you feel for and look for is lift, whether or not there's lift in front of the mountain. That's air that's rising up that's going to hold you up in the sky um, and which direction you might want to turn once you're launched. Um, you need to uh, be very sensitive to the sounds around you, like the rustling of the leaves of the trees, um, the advice that your friends might give, uh, those kinds of things. And then um, move smoothly into the air and then just begin to fly. Once you do that, um, you're going to have to do something very special to become a landbound person again, and that's called landing. So taking off is a, a, a flight decision that commits you to making a landing. So the, the first thing that goes through my mind is, is do I want to land right now? Do I want to commit to a landing? If I don't intend to commit to a landing, I don't take off. And so once you've crashed over, the, crushed over that threshold and said, yes, I, I like conditions, I like the things that I see, um, you just move into the air and uh, begin to fly. Thinking you might like to try it is one thing. I think if, you, if, if you've had a love for aviation um, and you love a really great game with nature, then, you know, then I think you know, you'll like it. I mean, the, there is learning to fly a hang glider. There's, there's a fair amount of uh, physical and mental work, but it's a labor of love. When I'm flying around, I don't think about anything. This hang gliding is kind of my escape from everyday life. I mean, when I'm flying, sometimes I'm thinking about where the next thermal is and where the strongest part of it is so I can hit the core and get as high as possible, but a lot of times I notice I do my best flying when I'm not thinking, you know, you just kind of zone out and it takes your mind off everything. I've never thought about, you know, other life obligations that I have, schoolwork or my job or anything. It's just doesn't float to the top of the list when you're up there. When we ask people why they hang glide, everyone had a different reason. This relatively unknown sport says a lot about the people who do it. They enjoy it for their own unique reasons. Seeking sensational thrills, soaring high in the sky, awesome experiences on wings. 
Hang gliding adventures will leave you achieving ultimate freedom firsthand. You never know what you will see soaring effortlessly over grassy fields. If you want to take a hang gliding adventure and see what the birds see, log on to www.flyhighhg.com. For Neighborhood Journal, I'm Joanna Denicio. No, thank you. You will never catch me running off the side of a mountain. But if you want information on hang gliding excursions, go to RyanVoigtProductions.com. Well, there's more to see here at Neighborhood Journal, so don't fly anywhere.